Hey guys, welcome back to Station Tube. Today we're going to be talking about retaking the MCAT. First, I'll start with my story, retaking the MCAT, and then we'll talk about whether you should retake the MCAT or not. So I had just gotten my score back after taking the MCAT the first time, and I got a 28. Uh, and I was debating whether I should retake that or not. Uh, 28, uh, that's the 67th percentile, and it's equivalent to today's 505. Um, I knew that if I retook the test and I did worse, that that would, that would kill my application, that I would not look very good at all. Uh, but based on my practice tests, I thought maybe I could do better. So I talked with some friends about it and did some research. And uh, I wanted to really give my shot, uh, I really wanted to give myself a shot at MD school. So I scheduled a retake for seven weeks out. I was just offered a job at a lab uh, working full time, but I had to turn it down because I knew that I needed to study full time for this. So I removed all distractions, all other obligations, and I put myself on an eight hour per day study schedule. Monday through Friday, I would do practice problems, I would do flashcards. Anki is a great flashcard app, by the way. And I did 50 minute blocks of studying with a 10 minute break. I did this Monday through Friday, and then on Saturday, I would simulate practice tests as best as I could up until a few weeks before the MCAT, and then I started taking the real practice tests. A side note, studying for step one, there was 11 hours a day for three full months. That was rough. I made sure I was eating and sleeping right, and I exercised at least four times a week. But my schedule really wasn't the difficult part of studying to retake the MCAT. It was the nagging feeling that my score wouldn't improve and that I'd never get into medical school and never become a doctor. I'm sure some of you are feeling that right now, but you need to keep in mind that studying for a retake of the MCAT takes a lot of mental and emotional strength. And if you do that, that strength, I think, will really pay off for when you're taking step one. I just did it very recently, and I got my score back, and I'm really happy with it. And I know that retaking the MCAT not only did it allow me to get into the medical school that I wanted to, but it really helped me get to a mental and emotional state so I was able to do that. So it, this time that you are going through right now, yeah, it might be really difficult, but it will pay off in the end. After my retake, I got my score back and I had improved by three points. So I was in the 82nd percentile, which is equivalent to a 510 today. Uh, my sense of accomplishment was almost as big as my sense of relief that I had from finally being done with it. If you live in a state with a lot of state-run medical schools, then maybe you don't need to get the 80th percentile on the MCAT, um, but if you don't live in one of these states, then that's a general rule that, that you should try to keep. If you have a 509 or above, I really wouldn't recommend retaking unless your practice scores are significantly higher than a 509 and you're absolutely not happy with your score. Uh, but the AAMC has come out with information saying if you have a 512 or above and you retake, you're more likely to do worse than improve by three points or more. First, you need to evaluate why you didn't do better than you did. Uh, my initial thought after I got my score back for the first one was that I got unlucky with the questions because my practice tests were so much higher than the score that I got originally. And maybe there is some, some truth to that, but I guarantee that wasn't the main problem. Think about your study habits and how you can improve them. Uh, I spoke with a psychologist about this and she said to have study rituals. So when you start studying, uh, do something like turn on a lamp, and then when you're done studying, turn it off. Just have something that tells your subconscious that, hey, this is study time, and I'm only going to study during this time. Uh, I've got friends in med school who they installed programs on their computers that uh, it would disallow them from going on websites like Facebook or ESPN, and it seemed to work all right for them. In terms of what you should be studying, 
Begin using new questions. Don't revisit old questions. Uh, and don't feel bad buying new materials because this is an investment in your future. You need to constantly remind yourself that you can do this. Your brain can understand and memorize every formula and every topic on the MCAT. The idea of your best effort is a fluid term because there are things in your life that you can add in or take out that will improve your level of dedication to studying this material. Once you put in the work, you can feel good about what you've accomplished regardless of the outcome. Thanks for watching and go get them.